Are you ready, church? Last week, we saw that our shame gets turned to victory by Jesus. And we actually saw that's his glory. The glory of the Lord is to take what's wrong in our lives, even if it's our own wrongdoing, and turn it to victory. And he's proud to do that. He loves to walk that walk with us. And today we're going to look at, but does he also turn our mourning into dancing? Because it was heavy stuff last week, but there are situations in our lives where it even seems irreversible. And uh, let's go to the, the, the verse where we ended last week. It's from Romans 8. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And this verse, I loved to preach. I, I, oh, one of the favorites. He turns all things for good. But as I was preaching it in the past, I already sensed that there are people in the room or people watching that have been through stuff that it's, it's not so easy to say, oh, it will be just turned for good. And then eight years ago, my dad died. Too young, in my opinion. And uh, then, then uh, I stopped actually preaching that verse. It was so, so tough for me to, to uh, understand. So that's what I want to talk with you about. Are there situations in your life, or, or maybe you lost someone dear to you, that, that at first becomes a bit like, ah, it's hard to embrace that verse or to be cheerful saying that verse. So um, I'm going to speak from my own life. My, our journey went on. So um, two years after uh, my dad uh, went to the Lord, I, uh, we, bought, we got a new home, a new house, and it had a garden, a big garden. So I went to my mom. And I got the garden tools from dad, because dad loved to do gardening. And I got his tools, and I started to work in my garden. But you know, then it comes so close. You, you, dad had these things in his hand, and I'm working with them. And you know what happened? Slowly, bit by bit, I start to talk to my dad, but actually more giving thanks. I start to give thanks. I start to give thanks. And uh, I don't know how it is with you, but... Uh, I often forget to be grateful. I have children now myself, and they take everything for granted. And I noticed that me, towards my dad, had take, have taken a lot of things for granted. And funny enough, I start to be grateful. I start to give thanks. Is that good? So hey, something starts to be turned for good. But it was not all. Then the situation came, which we are facing now. Yeah, we're still a bit with COVID, um, but now we already have war. So it, like, it seems to go back to back problems on the earth. Now let's see what the Lord Jesus says about that. He says, now when these things begin to happen, that's the wars, the rumors of wars, pestilences, whatever, all that stuff, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Hallelujah, there's our theme of the year, we look up, amen? But the Lord challenged on my insight, <laughs> what are you seeing when you look up? We're, we're asked to look up, and I was walking, I was walking in the evening, and uh, it was dark, and I thought, yeah, you don't want me to see the stars, that's not what that verse is for. What does God want us to see? So then he led me to a verse, which we all know, but in my insight, that always re remained a bit romantically pictured, like it's for later, it's for after this life. Because what does the Lord say be just before he leaves the earth? He says, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? Now, we all know this verse, huh? But still in my head, that was a bit like, yeah, but that's in the far future. And that changed. That changed. So I start thinking about my dad again. Man, 
He's already there. He has his place. Amen. Everyone dear to us who we lost, they're home. Amen. Man, that, that, that is so... They're not coming here. We are going there. Our future is there. Only that future starts now. Because that was still a bit of distance, you know. So I, I, I grew already gratefulness towards my dad. And then I, I grew also some, some glad for him. Happy, you know. Life was also challenging for him. So him being home where Jesus prepared his place. Hallelujah. You know, but often our sadness goes with deep grief and hurts and not understanding. And especially when it's or too soon or it's the wrong order. It's a child while, while the parrot is still around. All of these things. And that starts to be resolved by me, me living in gratefulness, but also wanting it for him. Then the Lord said, but you can still get closer. He said, your idea for that verse is still like in the future and he's already there and we're still here and then it's not just missing. And then he led me to a verse. We're going to read it and it can distract you because it seems to be about the Jew and the Gentile. Actually, it is about the Jew and the Gentile who both when they find Christ, they become one in Christ and but then it says something so beautiful. Let's read it. It's from Ephesians 2. It says, For through him we both, that's the Jew and the Gentile, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. This is not in future perspective. Being members of his household is here and now. Now, which house is that? Which house Paul is speaking about? It's the house of the Father. It's the house of the Father. It would have many rooms. You could say, but there's different layers in the house. And that already is at the next level. While well, I'm a level, of, but we're all in the house. We're all, our beloved ones whom we miss are so much closer than we realize. And we are so much closer to heaven than we realize. Amen? We, I often don't live like that. I didn't live like that. I get to realize more and more heaven is here and we are already in heaven. We're all already living together in one house, the house of the Father. And I always imagine then a table, like a long kitchen table, and Father, our Abba Father, is sitting at the end of the table, and all his kids are sitting there, all of them. The ones who are here, and the ones who are already there. And then I already make the mistake, because I already split up a here and a there. So that's allowed to grow in us. When we received Christ, we were no longer foreigners and strangers, but we were fellow citizens with the Jews who were already God's people. We were, we were all included. But also the distance between heaven and earth is not what we experience. It's for the believers, it's different. We all already live in the house of the Father. Amen. And the Bible verse said, he will turn all things for good. So, now imagine, I, I, I thought it went wrong with my dad. That went wrong. And there was like still like a, a sadness in me. And then garden tools are helping me to learn gratefulness. And then bad happenings on the earth help me to realize the house of the Father and live more with my mind already towards heaven. So when Paul said, I'll, he will make all things work together for good. That is even literally true. Amen. Amen. God just needs the opportunity. Can he? 
Just ask him, Lord, help me. Even in your situation, in your specific matter, help me, Lord, to see how you turn these things for good. Now, in, in my case, it took almost eight years to, to get that, but still. Now, there was another verse I was struggling with. Let's see. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Now, why I was a bit struggling with this, for, with this verse, uh, I had situations the last two years uh, which were so unfair. So actually, the subtitle of the, term is, look, uh, of the, the sermon is, look again. What if life is unfair? Now, we just said, man, life can be irreversibly unfair, seemingly. But now I want to talk about another type of unfair. How I got treated was unfair. And, you know, when we talk about the sufferings of Christ, it's not about the cross or the nails, because that's actually dealing with our sin, and that's restoring our relationship with God, and it deals with the requirements of the law. Not that kind of suffering we're supposed to share in. That's between God and us, and that did Jesus took that for us, so that we don't have to take that. But then there's a part of his sufferings, which is how we treat one another, how he was treated by people. That's what I'm talking about. And we all know, yeah, we're supposed to forgive one another. Yeah, we're supposed to forgive one another. But you know what happens with me when I'm treated unfair? I want to fight for my right. I want to speak up. <laughs> Ooh, you should ask my wife. I can walk around like a bull through the house. Think who I'm going to walk over and uh, I will tell him. <laughs> so I had situation after situation, back upon back. And you know what the Lord did to me? He, he, he told me, well, I, I'm just going to say it how, uh, how I understood it, but he said it very nice and gently, but I hear, shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, um, and that had to do with sharing in his sufferings. So all the time when I, when I felt like, and now I'm going to fight for my right, shut up. Be quiet. And oh, what a struggle, what a struggle. But then he, uh, he led me to, uh, to this verse. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is, is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Okay, okay, Lord, I see. Yeah, you know, this is Isaiah 53. It's a favorite chapter of Jesus. <laughs> and there we see, yeah, the Lord also did not open his mouth. But I, and I knew, yeah, at Pilate, I know. But, so I, but I asked him, Lord, how, how can I share in your sufferings? And you know what? You know, it should be attractive to us. Because it says, let's go back to that one. Now listen, look carefully and listen on your insight if you want it. Can we go back to Romans 8? Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Amen. Now, who wants to share in his glory? Yeah, all of us. The other question I don't have to ask. <laughs> Who wants to share in his sufferings? None of us. <laughs> so I asked the Lord, but where? How can I relate to these sufferings of you? How, wh where is it then happening exactly? How does that work? And then the Lord starts speaking to me. He said, so you want to know where, where that happened in my finished work, in my journey, in my sufferings? I said, yes, Lord. He says, yeah, you know a lot about uh, sufferings. I said, yeah, Lord, I know a lot about it. 
You know, oh, every, every single element of his journey towards the cross has meaning. You know, all, we all know the stripes by which we are healed. We know the crown of thorns. And, and I studied them all, I thought. Yeah, I actually studied them all. And I, and I knew most. And it ends up at the cross and the, 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 the nails have a meaning even and all of that. Even after his death, that his sight is pierced, that water and blood comes out. It's a picture of the birth of the church. The second Eve coming out of the sight of the second Adam. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, the Lord said, still, you didn't understand too much of my finished work. He said, because try to find the common denominator in all of them. There is something which is during the journey of Jesus is which is continuously the same. Yeah, after a lot of meditation, I gave up. I said, okay, Lord, can you tell me? You know what he showed me? He said, it was all unfair. It was all unfair. Is that correct? Other question, did Jesus deserve anything of which he went through? No, so it was all unfair. But you know what that looked like for the Lord, that it was all unfair? After every step, before he went into the next suffering, which was even more horrible, he had to choose again. Am I going to go on with this? And step after step, through all the horrible things, the Lord chose to endure unfair. He kept his mouth shut. Amen. And that's what the Lord did for you and I. And if we share in that suffering, what's the promise? In order that we might share in his, his glory. What is his glory? What happened? After all his sufferings, he was resurrected. Because it was all unfair. God had all right to lift him from the dead in all glory. And it was done. He did it. So yes, there is suffering to share in. But yes, that is in order to share in the resurrection power. Now, it absolutely doesn't feel like that when you're in front of it. And most of the time, it doesn't feel like it when you keep your mouth shut. You know, even when you have your mouth shut, that on the inside, there's a lot happening still. <laughs> but you learn to really bring it to silence in the Lord. There you touch him, and then you touch his glory. And Paul got that. Wow. Now, this is the theory. Now, when it gets practical, I, 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 we're going to look at one case from the Bible. Two brothers were fighting in the church, in the Corinthians church. Two had a dispute. It was probably about business, probably even about money. And then let's see what Paul says to them, because they were actually fighting. None of them was holding back. No, we're going to go for our right. Now, you should be wiser. But instead, one brother takes another to court. And this in front of unbelievers. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Well, I'll give you the answer. Why not? Because then I'm the loser. Amen? Let's be honest. But Paul knew, no, 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 no. No, no, no. This is defeat. Fighting for yourself, opening your mouth, wanting your right. That is defeat. So Paul, Paul was so convinced of the, the finished work of the Lord and walking in that and then knowing you're walking in the glory that he says, why would you do this? He means it honestly. He says, I don't understand. Well, I think he would run into some people in our midst and I would be the first one that he would have to ask the same. Why don't you 
swallow just unfair. You know you will partake in the glory. Let's see how Paul's, how, he, how he's convinced of that. It is, as it's written, this is about our, the stuff that happened to us. For your sake, we faith, face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Does it sound familiar? It's Isaiah 53. The Lord was. But he says we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now the question is, are we? Are we if we behave like that? You know, to be, to be considered a sheep who's led to slaughter, you know what it looked like? Okay, there was a case, you just bowed your head. Instead of fighting, you said, meh. <laughs> and for the rest, well, then you'll be slaughtered. You're the loser, you're the weakling, you're not ready for this world. This is not how this is going to work. So then you're observed by, observed by everyone, you're considered a sheep to be slaughtered if you behave like that, if, if that's your posture. Amen? Let's see what Paul says. No! In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Going for your battle, trying to win your fight yourself, you stand defeated. Taking the posture of Christ with Christ, sharing in his sufferings, you are more than conqueror. For if you share in his suffering, that is in order, there's no way that it cannot happen. It's in order, so it's also no suffering. Yeah, because you need that. It's good for you. No, if suffering happens, this is in order to share in his glory. That's the purpose, that's the goal. Amen? Wow. Can I invite you to more unfairness? <laughs> now, this stuff, you know, we're human beings. So I want to ask the band to come because, you know, from the first part where we looked into seemingly irreversible things like horrific happenings, death, all that stuff, you, you cannot just switch that like, oh, no, 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 that was all wrong thinking. Let's just be, have glory. But are you willing to invite God today? Show me how you're going to turn this for good. This situation in my life, this what happened to me. Help me, Lord. Help me. And, and, and of course, we don't want long, long journeys, but even when it takes years, but show me, Lord. Amen. And about all the unfair stuff that often did a lot in us, even if we walked in our own strength and that has all kind of effect and damage, but also still to do that, to choose to keep your mouth shut, that's even tough. And you know what it needs? Meeting with the Lord. So I asked the band to take us into worship to what we just all spoke about. It's all true, it's all Bible. It's all clear we're supposed to deal, walk in unfairness. The Lord did it all for us. But to really have it working in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls, we need to worship. Even if you're disappointed in the Lord, in what has happened to you, you don't understand it anymore. All the question marks, why, Lord, why? And how, if it's turned for good, how, Lord, how? Would you like to exchange that, all of that, just with the presence of the Lord? then let's just worship Him and let Him do it. Oh, we worship You, Jesus. How we love Your presence, God. Come and have Your way. Come and have Your way. Have Your way. Oh, yeah. I love You, Lord. For oh, your mercy never fails me, oh my dear, I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up, from the time
and you want to lift it you want to lift it oh my children oh my children you know the glory of the Lord is the glory of the Lord Jesus that he brought us home we're in the house of the Father right here right now amen with all our beloved whether they're in on earth or in heaven we're one The next song is going to be how great is our God. But I want to share one more unfair thing, which was very unfair to me from the Bible. And then you see the greatness of God. You see the glory of Jesus. Then you see he goes so far beyond our lives. He, he is before our beginning and he's long after us. Amen. But King David was a great king and uh, he was actually the first king who removed all the enemies from the land 
Joshua already got the commandment, remove all the enemies. It, it was never properly done. There were still left all kinds of tribes which shouldn't be there. And then David is the king who finally cleans up the land. And even from the first battle, he already starts gathering materials to build the temple. His very first battle of his kingship, he already starts gathering stuff. And then through his whole life, he keeps on gathering materials for the temple. And then time comes and then God says, you cannot build the temple. You have blood on your hands. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I, th I thought this is unfair. He cleans out the land and then he cannot build the temple. And then I walk around with that. So one day I was standing in Jerusalem in a part called the city of David. And I was looking at the temple complex. And then the Lord suddenly asked me, do you want to know how that situation, how that truly is in the spirit? And I, I knew immediately, I wasn't thinking of it, but I knew immediately that the Lord wanted to speak about that. I felt for David. Anyone here who feels for David like, man, this is... But there can be situations in all of our lives that you think this is just... And then the Lord showed me, he said, so David didn't get to build the temple. No. He said, but... Uh, the, the temple Solomon got to build, his son, is it still here? No. No, that was broken down, the temple. He said, okay. He said, and what's the temple called in the book of Revelation, which is in the eternal? You know what? It's called the temple of David. If righteousness is not done on this earth, it'll show up in eternity amen and that's about all our situations and all what's unrighteous or unfair in our lives amen that's the greatness of our God Let's sing the verse together. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice Come on He wraps himself in life and darkness tries to hide And trembles at His voice It trembles at His voice Come on, we declare it today How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And oh, we'll see how great
us, let's join up the angels and declare it how great. How great. Sing with me how great is our God. And all oh, will see how great. How great is our God. For all eternity, He is great. How great. He's still a great God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all oh, will see how. serve a great God who is able to take all things, say all things, even those things that are unfair, even those things that seem impossible to change, He is able to take all things and work them for our good. He's a great God. In this moment, we'd like to give God an opportunity to take something and really work it for good. The Bible says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Pastor Marcel was talking about the unfairness of what Jesus went through for us, for me, and for you. Bible says that he was punished so that we don't have to be. He went through what should have been mine so that I can have what is his. He took my sin so I could take his righteousness. And the Bible talks of that as a gift. It's a gift. But like with every gift, there comes a moment where you have to reach forth your hand and actually receive it. And we'd love nothing more than today right here in this place to be able to help you to reach out and receive the gift of salvation, to receive the gift of forgiveness, to receive all that Jesus has done for you, just as I have for me and many hundreds across this room have had done for themselves the Bible says that when you believe in your heart and speak with your mouth you will be saved and if you're here no matter where you are right in the front or right at the back if you've never received the gift that Jesus died to give you we'd love to help you do that this morning and I'm going to ask our church family to pray a prayer with me so that you're not praying it alone. And as we pray together, believe in your heart, speak with your mouth, and the Bible says you will be 
saved. Let's bow our heads. It's a personal moment between you and the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sin. Thank you for being punished in my place. Thank you for going through that which was unfair so that I can benefit. Please come into my heart. I receive that gift. That gift of salvation. That gift of forgiveness. I receive it for myself. Thank you for doing it for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that if you've prayed that for the very first time, something amazing has just taken place in your life. That you've gone into something brand new. That your old life, full of mistakes, full of hurts, full of brokenness, has been left behind. And you today, in this moment, you start a new life together with Christ. There's so much that could be spoken about of this moment of salvation. But we would love to start you walking that journey in the right direction. And we have a team of people who would love nothing more than to be able to meet with you, talk about this new decision, this this salvation moment, pray with you if you have any prayer requests. So they'll be in the foyer, through those doors at the back, in the foyer there's a new believers table please won't you go there. We've got some resource. We'd love to be able to talk with you, point you in the right direction. But remember today's date. Remember the time. The Bible says that this is the day that your name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Forever your eternity is secure in Him. What a joy and what a privilege. Church, we're going to receive communion this morning at this time. And if you don't have one of these little containers with some juice and a wafer, just raise your hand and we'll make sure that we get it to you. Just keep it up high and we'll get it. I see there are a few hands. Um, Our team will get it through to you. Just keep your hand up high. If you haven't used one of these, you've a couple of layers. You've got to peel back the first layer that gives you the wafer and then the second layer that allows you to have access to the juice. But we'll participate together at this time. The Bible says that this wafer represents his body. And it's a moment for us to bring Jesus and his finished work into full focus. So often when things go on around us, we can feel like, God, do you really love me? You may have been facing something that was unfair. You may have been felt like you were disappointed when things didn't go the way you were hoping. And in those moments, we can question, does God really love me? And this is why we have this holy moment every time we gather, because it focuses us back on the cross. When you look at the cross and when you see what Jesus went through for me and for you, We never, ever have to doubt the love that he has for us. So in this moment, church, I'd like us to just close our eyes and just picture Jesus on the cross. How much he loves us. That he would go through everything for me and for you. His body broken so that our body can be whole physically, emotionally. See him hanging on that cross and whatever you're struggling with right now, Jesus took it for you. Let's eat together. As he hangs on that cross, his blood flows down a blood that washes away every sin know this morning that nothing 
is stronger than the blood of Jesus. No sin is greater. Receive his forgiveness. Allow that blood to wash over. Don't allow our enemy to tell you that there's anything you've done that cannot be forgiven. Look to the cross and see every sin hanging there and his blood washing it away. Receive this morning his righteousness. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and you would seal this word in our hearts this morning. As we look to Jesus and his finished work, as we recognize what you went through, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for doing it for us. We're so incredibly, incredibly grateful. And all of God's people said. Thank you so much for watching today's word. I know you were blessed greatly and I want to let you know if you want more resource like this, more sermons like this, they're all available for free on YouTube or on our Redemption Church app. So I want to encourage you, if it blessed you, share this link with someone else and ensure that you get more of God's goodness and word in you. We are so excited that Redemption Church has been able to serve you with the good news of Jesus Christ today and look forward to seeing you return for more of God's goodness as we preach the word of Jesus. Be blessed.